All right, so one of the things I want you to pay attention to is the order in which it is written. This threw some of y'all um, on your quiz because all of y'all knew you needed to start at three and really the closed circle was not the issue. So we know that we're gonna be at three with a closed circle. But what I want you to do in your mind when you look at this is say, is my variable bigger than three or smaller than three? Well here, my variable is bigger than three and your variable is what you are graphing. And so my variable is bigger than three, which means I'm gonna graph everything larger than three here. And some of y'all had a tendency to graph it the opposite direction because it was a less than. But just think about whether your variable piece is larger or smaller than the number, and that's the part that you're gonna graph. Um, the same thing is true here. Everybody knows we're gonna start at six, and so my variable compared to my six my variable here is smaller than my six. And then because it was an open circle, you don't wanna put that extra line there. So this would be X is less than six. All right, we had one step, we had distribution and solving. Um, compound and solving, and so make sure you know how to do all of those. For something like this first one, remember this is not an absolute value, you're just doing what it says. I would recommend that you solve it somewhere, so some of y'all tried to just solve it up at the top, and you kind of ran over yourself, so make sure you solve it somewhere so that you can make sure you check your numbers well, but this is just a one step. I'm just going to subtract my 10 from both sides. I'm left with a V. Leave this guy alone. And then 27 minus 10 gives me 17. And then to graph it, I'm going to find my 17. It is open circle because it's not or equal to. My variable is larger than 17, so I'm going to graph all the numbers that are bigger than 17. For something like number 15, you do need to do your same rules of distribution and um, subtracting and dividing. And so again, you'd probably wanna put it somewhere over to the side or below it. Just make sure you write it correctly. And then you're gonna distribute six times four, six times negative three V. And we leave our less than or equal to alone right now. All right, you do wanna subtract the 24 over. Now, I do want to caution you, this is a negative 18V, so when you pull that down, make sure you pull down the negative in front of that 18. And for right now, you're going to leave that less than or equal to alone. And then you do want to do your subtraction on the other side. Now this is where you're gonna divide. When you divide this guy out, um, you wanna pay attention to the fact that you did bring down that negative. So you are dividing by negative 18 here. Um, so we do have a V and this guy is going to flip because I divided by a negative. And then this is evenly divisible. So 108 divided by negative 18 is negative six. And then again, we're gonna to go to our six. It is closed circle because it is or equal to. Because it flipped, my variable is everything bigger than that negative six, and so I'm gonna graph everything larger than that negative six there. at this point move into our compound inequalities. You can think of all of these as just two separate inequalities. Remember for or, they don't have to cross. Whatever it graphs, it graphs. For and, your final graph needs to be where they cross. And so I would always recommend just doing two different, two different inequalities. Even if they're pushed together, um, like they are on number 24, just set up two separate inequalities, the first and second one, and then the second and third one and just set up two inequalities when they don't have them already separated. When they do have them separated, just work them out individually. So I'm gonna work out this first one 
and I'm going to figure that one out. This is an or, so then I'll work out the second one and graph them individually because it doesn't matter where they fall on the graph. And so when you're working these out, you're gonna do it exactly like you did the other one. We're gonna add our four to both sides. We're left with seven X, leave your greater than alone. You have negative seven. Um, we are dividing by a positive. So this does not flip my sign here. It doesn't matter what your answer is. It matters what you're dividing by. Do the same thing on the other side. Subtract your nine. We have six X, leave that less than alone. And then divide by your six. Again, it doesn't matter that your answer is negative. It matters that we divide it by a positive. So nothing flipped here. And this is an or. These are not going to cross each other. If I go to negative one, I will do an open circle. And everything larger than that negative one, go to that negative eight, another open circle, and everything smaller. So that whole number line um, where I have graphed it includes all of it, even though they don't cross. That is my answer because this is an or problem. We're going to do the and the same exact way. We just now have to consider the fact that it is um, where they cross specifically. So for this one, once again, I'm going to work them out individually. So I'm going to work out the first one on its own, work out the second one, and then I'm going to look and see where those two graphs cross. And so when I do this one, subtract my 9. 3x greater than or equal to negative 12. And then divide by that 3. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Do the same thing over here. 6x is less than negative 12. Divide by your 6. x is less than negative 2. All right, so my smallest number is smaller than my variable, which is smaller than my largest number. And so when you write it like that, you can see that's where they actually cross. If you don't want to do that, you can always do a little, a lot of y'all did this. We said, oh, well, it's closed circle on negative 4, and it's bigger open circle at negative two and it's smaller and you can see that where they cross is in between them. So we would have a closed circle on negative four, an open circle on negative two, and we are going to graph everything that falls in between them. So your final answer on your graph needs to be just where they cross when it is an and. All right, so remember for absolute value, you have to make sure the absolute value is by itself, and then you're going to set up two equations, all right? So first, the absolute value is by itself. You have the x plus 9 and the absolute value. There's nothing being add, subtract, multiply, or dividing. So it is by itself, which means we're going to take what's on the inside, which is the x plus 9, and we are going to set up two equations. So we're going to say x plus 9 equals 10, and we are going to say x plus 9 equals negative 10. All right? And then we're just going to solve these. We will subtract the 9 from both sides. For this one, we will get x equals 1. We will subtract the 9 from both sides here. Over here, we will get x equals negative 19. And both of these are your answers here. Those are both your answers. All right, for this one, my absolute value is not by itself. So I am not going to set up two equations yet. All right, I want to make sure I move this over first. So if I have any addition or subtraction, move it over with the opposite. If I have multiplication or division, move it over with the opposite if it's on the outside. And so this is on the outside of this, and so I'm going to move it first. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides before I even begin. And I have the absolute value of 3n plus 1 equals 22. 
Now my absolute value is by itself. And so now I'm ready to set up two equations of what is on the inside. So I will have 3n plus 1 equals 22 and 3n plus 1 equals negative 22. If you set up two equations before you get it isolated, you will get the wrong answers, okay? You will get one of them right because it won't affect it, but you'll get the other one wrong. And so you have to move that three over before you set up those two equations of positive and negative. Once you've done that, you're gonna solve it just like we did the one above it. We're gonna subtract our one from both sides. We will get 3n equals 21 divide by three. One of our answer rules will be n equals seven. And then we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. Subtract one, 3n equals negative 23, divide by three. Our other answer will be negative 23 thirds. So your rule here is to get the absolute value by itself. I will say at this point, I don't really have any addition or subtraction with these for you. So they are gonna already be isolated. As you get into higher math, like when you get to algebra two and you start doing these, those will also have ones that you need to isolate. So the rule is that you have to isolate it, even if it's an abs even if it's a greater than less than, okay? <clears throat> but these are already isolated for you and that's just because um, that's all we're doing for algebra one. Um, but you, if you did have a plus or minus or a multiplication on the outside, you would need to move that over first, all right? So both of these are already isolated, so I can go ahead and set up my two inequalities. I'm going to set up the first one just like it looks. I'm going to have the x plus 5. I'm going to leave it as a greater than, and I'm going to leave it as a 13. And then I'm going to set up a second one, the x plus 5. I am going to change the greater than and make it a less than. And I am going to change the positive 13 and make it a negative 13. I'm now ready to just solve them. All right. And so I'm going to subtract my 5. And I'm going to get that x is greater than 8. Um, because it was a greater than, this is an or problem. And so when I solve this other side, I will get x is less than negative 18, and it is or. So both of these are my answers. I don't have to worry about where they cross. I'm just going to graph them. Go to the 8. It is an open circle because it is just greater than, and it's everything larger than 8. And then open circle at negative 18 and everything smaller. And that would be my answer for this one. For this one, we have a less than or equal to, so this is going to be an and. It is already isolated, so I can go ahead and set up my two inequalities. The first one is going to look just like this. It is b plus seven is less than or equal to 17. And then b plus seven, flip that and make it a negative, all right? And I will say when you write these, what you'll find is that um, this one is always going to be your what he's smaller than typically, and this one is typically what he's larger. The only thing that'll change is if you were to have like something in front of your B, like a negative 2B, that would flip your signs. Um, but they would flip both of them. Once I have it set up, I can subtract my 7 from both sides. I have B is less than or equal to 10. Subtract my 7 b is greater than or equal to negative 24. And so this is an and problem. So what you'll see is negative 24 is my smallest. b is larger than that. So that is going to be smaller than my b, which is also smaller than 10. And so when you write it this way, it kind of shows you how you're going to graph it. You can see that you're all the way at 24 with a closed circle. You're all the way at 10 with a closed circle. And your answer is everything that falls in between those. So when your smallest number is smaller than B and B is then smaller than the largest number, it falls in between those always. It always falls in between it. And I will take either one of these as your answers. You can leave it like this and just graph it, 
or write it like this and graph it, but your graph needs to only show this on your final answer. So just if you need to write that down somewhere, you're greater than, it's going to be an or, and that includes or equal to, less than or less than or equal to is going to be an and. Both of these.